Hi, Girl Scouts. My name is Molly. I'm the program director at Girl Scouts of Virginia Skyline Council here in Roanoke, Virginia. And today we're going to be going over the Ambassador Survival Camper Badge, step number three. Um, so to get started, I'm going to just go over all the steps. Um, and then today, again, we're doing step three. So the steps are number one, plan a survival camping trip. Number two, gather your gear. Number three, plan and prepare your camp meals. Number four is to learn a survival camp skill. And number five is to go camping. So when you've earned this badge, you'll have planned and gone on a survival camping trip with a group of Girl Scouts or family members. Um, so again, today we're gonna be talking about step three, which is to plan and prepare your camp meals. And so what I am gonna do um, to get started here, is share a little presentation I've got to help you with uh, planning your own camp meals. It's a very individual process, but I'm gonna help walk you through um, some of the things you need to be thinking about and some of the ways to get started. All right. So, step three, plan and prepare your camp meals. So, this is a fun one if you enjoy survival camping if you're excited about taking a trip um, you're going to want to have well planned out and thought through meals so we're going to get started some of the things you want to think about are how much food are you going to need what kinds of food should you take how you should plan uh, how you should create your meal plan and how are you going to prepare your meals while you're out on your trip so Step one, how much food? That's a great place to start. Some of the things you wanna think about when um, you start the planning process is how many people are gonna be in your group? How many people are you planning for, right? Um, and what their individual needs are. So if there are different age ranges or if there are any food allergies or food sensitivities you need to be aware of, dietary um, constraints when you're planning. If you have vegetarians, you wanna make sure you're thinking about that. If you've got someone with a nut allergy, you wanna plan around that as well. Um, so making sure you know all that information from all the people in your group is gonna be really helpful. Something else to think about is how much energy are you gonna use um, while you're on your trip. So depending on what type of survival camping trip you take, you're gonna be using a different amount of energy, um, whether you're canoeing um, or backpacking or um, whatever your trip specifically looks like, you're gonna have a different amount of energy used. So think about um, what each day of your trip looks like and how much food you think you'll need based on how much energy you're gonna be using. Um, and then you're gonna be carrying your food, most likely, um, again, depending on the type of your trip. So think about um, how much food is enough. You always wanna take a little extra. You wanna have some spare food, extra snacks, things like that. Um, but you wanna make sure you don't bring way too much because you're just gonna be causing yourself more, um, you're just gonna be causing more work for yourself having to carry that. So um, thinking about a good amount of food and a little extra, but not going way overboard when you plan. So next up, you wanna think about what kind of food to bring, right? Um, there's a lot of different types of food you can take on a survival camping trip. You wanna make sure above all else that all of your food is portable, lightweight, and easy to pack. Um, you wanna make sure it's not bulky. So um, beyond that, things to think about are making sure you bring things that you are gonna like to eat. You don't wanna bring a bunch of stuff that you don't like or you don't want to eat because you wanna enjoy your meals. You wanna um, make it a fun part of the day, not just to get through the day. Uh, you wanna have a variety of foods. So if you have just one type of food for every dinner and you have five dinners in a row, that's gonna get really monotonous. And again, that's not gonna be enjoyable for you. So making sure to bring a little bit of a variety. Um, make sure to bring fresh fruit, foods if you can. Um, it will go into meal planning and we'll talk about it later. If you have fresh foods, you're gonna to want to use them earlier in the trip, of course, if there are things that will go bad. Um, but having fresh food with you is gonna be really, really nice and you're gonna enjoy having fresh foods. Uh, bringing spices, if you like, um, really salty things, don't bring a bunch of food and no ability to flavor them with salt, right? 
Uh, if you like hot sauce, like I do, I always like to bring the little packets of hot sauce um, when I'm out so I can add a little spice to my food as well. Um, things like that are really important. And then think about different beverages. So you're gonna have lots of water, you're gonna wanna drink lots of water, that's very important, but think about other things that you might want um, and ways to give you more energy as well. So hot chocolate in the morning is a favorite of mine. That's a great way to have a, a drink that's not just water, it's gonna give you a little sugar. Um, other things like sports drinks or or things like that, you can get little powdered packets of those. Um, having those are really fun too, because again, when you're drinking lots and lots of water, sometimes you want something a little different, um, and it helps because it gives you a little bit of energy along the way. So when we're talking about, actually I'll go back, when we're talking about um, meals to pack, it's really important, like we said, port weight, portable, lightweight, and easily packable. Ways that you can accomplish that when you think about dinner meals especially is maybe dehydrating your own meals. You can have a dehydrator in your home, you can make a meal and then dehydrate it, and then when you're on the trail, all you need to do is add water to prepare it. So um, that's an option. It's definitely something that's gonna be a little more time consuming. Um, you do have to plan in advance quite a lot, right? Um, because if you're making all your meals ahead of time and dehydrating them, that's, you know, that can be a time consuming process, but that's a great way to, um, to make your meals lightweight and packable. So another option is to use freeze dried, Let's try again. There we go. Freeze dried or uh, packaged, pre packaged dehydrated meals, commercial um, dehydrated meals. These are great because you know the work's already been done. They're very lightweight, they're very packable. Um, they actually can cook in the bag if you get this particular product. All you need is boiling water. So they are very convenient, um, these sorts of things. Um, however, they are going to be costly. So if you're trying to plan, a full week with nothing but these um, types of meals for dinner, it's gonna cost you a lot more than some of your other options. So when you talk, um, when we talk later about budgeting, that's something you're gonna wanna keep in mind and think about. So there are lots of options. Planning whatever is right for you is gonna be what it comes down to. All right, so now we get to the heart of it, the meal planning process. Um, this can be a little daunting, but it's very important that you do a thorough job of meal planning to make sure you, you know, get the most out of your survival camping trip. Um, so to start, you want to decide on a planning method that's going to work for you. Everyone's got a different way of planning. Um, maybe you want to make a spreadsheet. Maybe you want to write it out on pen and paper, just like a list, a running list or a brainstorm. Maybe you want to draw a grid with a schedule and have a very laid out schedule. Whatever works for you, just make sure you um, you go through it and you are thorough in your planning. So when you do this, you want to make sure you consider each day's activities. So again, some days might be different than others. Maybe one day you have a really huge hike of a big uphill of a mountain um, and you're going to spend more energy and need more food, right? So think about that. Think about how hungry everyone individually is going to be. Um, some people may require more food than others, some may require less. Um, thinking about everyone's individual needs is important as well. You also wanna think about timeline-wise. So if you do have a, a day on your um, schedule that you know is gonna be really, really, really long, maybe you wanna get up early and eat a real quick breakfast um, and get the ball rolling and then have a really easy dinner at the end of the night. Maybe a lunch that you can you know, not really unpack for, right? Um, things about things like that to think about. Um, also, do you want do you have a day where you need lots of snacks? Snacks are really important. You want to have lots of access to those throughout the day, and you want to make sure you have enough of them um, to get you through if if you're having um, a really big day. Um, what else? So think about the things you should eat and when. We talked about this a little bit earlier. If you do have fresh foods, you want to make sure that you're eating them before they go bad, right? Because otherwise you're just carrying around trash. Um, so thinking about that, if you bring things like, like oranges or um, maybe like spinach or cheese, things like that that you need to eat early on um, before, before they go bad, it's very important. And then your budget, it's very important when you're meal planning to think about your budget. 
some meals are going to be way more costly than others and maybe you want to treat yourself with a certain certain thing just making sure that you balance it out with other less costly meals when you're planning um, and keeping an eye on your budget throughout the process so you know you're not going over and if you are going under maybe think about extra treats you can add all right another thing to think about when you're planning your meals is water water is crucial right so knowing how to properly find filter and or treat water is a critical skill when you're survival camping. It's very important. Um, so you wanna consider water also when you're meal planning, because again, if you're using dehydrated meals, you have to add water. And so that might mean you need a little more water than you do just for hydration, um, for your own hydration. Um, so thinking about that when you're planning your meals is very important. Um, and then knowing how to find water. Depending on where you're going, you may have lots of water access and know exactly where it is. Other places you may have certain, um, certain stream crossings that are specifically where you need to collect water and you need to make sure that you're aware of that beforehand. Checking your guides, knowing your trip, uh, your trip plan really well is gonna be very important. Also knowing some water sources are seasonal. Some streams and creeks don't run all year round. Sometimes in the summer they dry out, right? Because it's really hot. So knowing, um, knowing what that's gonna look like and where you can find water, very important. And then also knowing how to properly collect it. You wanna make sure that when you are at water sources, you're not um, you know, being irresponsible or disrespectful. You're not gonna contaminate a water source by you know, tromping through it in your muddy boots. You wanna leave things um, better than you found them, right, as a Girl Scout. And so you wanna make sure that you're, um, you know the proper way to collect water. And then beyond that, you wanna know how, oops, I'll go back. You wanna know your purification methods, right? So um, you don't wanna drink just straight uh, creek water. You don't wanna drink water straight from a stream. You wanna know how to filter it or treat it or boil it or any combination of the three. So this picture in, in the, um, and the main is a filter, it's called a Sawyer straw. That's what I actually use um, as of my filter. It's very easy, very convenient, and I'm actually gonna cover that in the next video, how to use that particular um, type of method, of water filter method. Um, so filtering water is a really good idea, knowing not only that you have the equipment to filter water, but that you know very much how to use it and how to keep it in good working order is super important. Um, or knowing how to treat water. Um, sometimes all you can do is, is use a treatment method, things like iodine, um, but knowing that you don't wanna do that all the time. That's not a, that's not a thing you wanna do every time you're drinking water. You wanna make sure that you know um, how to use it when you need to and when it's appropriate to use it. So educating yourself on those um, factors is really important. And then boiling water is a great way to, um, to purify it. Sometimes you absolutely want to boil it, even if you filtered it and treated it. And um, knowing that you have the capability to do, um, do that is really important. All right. So water, very, very important. Also important when you're meal planning is thinking about your cooking methods, right? So depending on what you plan and what uh, meals you make, you wanna think how they're gonna be prepared. Maybe you're gonna have a portable stove for cooking, a little uh, camp backpacking stove that you can just boil water on maybe, especially if you're doing the rehydration um, of a dehydrated meal, you're just gonna need to boil water probably. Um, maybe you need a pot to actually cook the food in, think about that and also how to clean it. Um, maybe you're gonna make a fire and cook something over the fire. Again, that goes back to planning your trip, knowing if fires are permitted, knowing if it's you know, a good time of year to make a fire, that it's not gonna be dangerous, um, things like that. Maybe you have some ready to eat meals. A lot of times lunches, it's really nice to have things that are just ready to eat. Um, like uh, I'll have some examples of um, some of my favorite recipes in a little bit, but things that you don't have to necessarily stop and start a, uh, start a fire for or stop and, mm -hmm light your camp stove for are really nice. Um, so some of your meals may be ready to eat and that's great, it's a lot, a lot easier. Um, but if you are gonna use fuel, like in a portable stove, think about how much you're gonna need. It's important to know how long your meals are gonna take to cook. Um, so if they're rehydrated, you might just have boiling water and then they cook there. But if you're actually cooking things um, that take time, like rice or uh, pasta or beans, knowing how long it will take, 
because you may need a certain amount of water and fuel to make that happen. So it's important to know. I always recommend definitely having a practice um, meal with your equipment beforehand is super, super important. Even if it's something you've used before, making sure you light it, turn it on, know how to use it, make sure it's in good working order is very important. You definitely don't wanna get your first night out on your trip and find out that something's not working, right? And then you have to improvise, right? So all important things in the planning, meal planning process. All right. So these are some of my fun meal ideas, just things I like, things that are quick and easy, some of them, some of them are just really delicious. Um, so breakfasts, I really love, love apple cinnamon oatmeal, The just the little packets, all you need is water, they are delicious, they're very fast, all you have to do is boil water and you are good to go. I also love grits uh, with cheese and bacon bites um, to add a little bit of extra, um, extra protein. Um, so they're also, they can come in a packet. They're really easy, quick. Hot chocolate, like I said, it's great to have a nice hot cup of hot chocolate or coffee for me. Um, when you're getting started in the morning, it's a really nice way to, you know, start your day. Lunches. So like I said, some of these are just, they're ready to eat. You don't need to do anything but put them together. So peanut butter and jelly on a bagel is really good. I like to add some trail mix on top and mix it all together. It's delicious. Um, tuna and cheese tortillas. You just wrap them up. They're delicious, really good to go. You do also, if you have, um, again, if you have cheese that might go bad, you want to make sure you eat it early in the trip so that it's still good to go. Um, salami and cheese, maybe some crackers, super, super yummy, very filling. And for lunches and throughout the day, again, lots of snacks, um, energy bars, things like that are really important, especially if you're using up a lot of energy. And then dinners, um, mac and cheese is great. Ramen noodles are a favorite. Uh, dehydrated chicken and rice can be really good. It's just very filling. Um, and always try to include a little dessert for yourself, even if it's just a like a half a Snickers bar. Um, that's really, really fun way to end the day if you've got a little dessert for yourself. So thinking of ways you can incorporate that. All right, so. Last but not least, carrying and protecting your food. So again, you are gonna be taking your food with you. It's gonna be on your back in a backpack maybe, or maybe it's in your boat in a canoe or, or some other way. Um, so making sure that while you're carrying your food, you've got it in there secured and you're packing it well. You don't wanna just throw all your food uh, loose in your backpack, right? Um, so some of the, these are just some ideas, some options. So waterproof food bag is one that's what i actually use um it's great because it keeps your food nice and dry um, and you can roll the top of it um, and it's also very uh very small it stuffs into your bag really easily so that's a great option uh bear resistant bag this one over over here it's actually made with a material that is um tested to withstand bear attacks which is pretty crazy um because not only bears but other animals um will try to get into your food or anything that smells good to them even trash um so making sure you have a bag that can withstand that it can be really important um bear bags are uh, a really cool option for that however some places that you go actually require that you take a bear canister um, because they have a lot of bear activity. And that's not to say that it's unsafe to go there. It just means that the bears there will try to get into your food. Um, and it's really, really important to protect not only your food, but to protect the bears from being attracted to your food um, because that's not great for wildlife either. And so that's why some places require that you keep your food in a bear canister. So obviously, if you're taking a bear canister, you wanna make sure you've thought through that all of your food fits in there. Um, completely and that that fits well into your backpack, right? So things to think about beforehand. Again, it goes back to knowing the area. If you know that you're gonna be in an area that's got a lot of bear activity, maybe making sure you've got your food in an appropriate spot. Um, some other things that go along with this protecting your food is, if especially if you're backpacking, you're in the woods where there are animals, you wanna make sure that you protect your food overnight. Again, not just food, but food, trash, toiletries like um, toothpaste, anything that smells um, or you know produces scent is going to be attractive to animals like mice and raccoons and foxes and squirrels, like everything, every kind of animal will be trying to get your food. So um, 
things that you can do to protect it are uh, throwing a bear hang, which is a rope in a tree that's hung properly um, to avoid animal activity, which is really cool. I might go over that, um, or at least I'll go over some of the knots used for that in um, our next video. And um, other places, again, some places have what are called um, bear boxes that are um, provided for people, even in backcountry settings where they're provided for people to store their food in overnight. They're just huge metal containers. Um, so uh, food can be safe from bears. And again, the bears can be safe from wanting to get the food. Um, so knowing where you're going and knowing where your options are as far as that goes are important um, to keep your, your stuff safe. All right. So I think that is all that I've got for our uh, video today. Hopefully you learned a lot about how to plan and prepare your camp meals. And I hope you get started on planning your own. Thanks so much. And we'll be back next week for step four of the Ambassador Survival Camper Badge. Thank you.